This morning with DC News Now, picking up pieces. What's left after a fire tears through a Virginia warehouse? Bridge blame? Why Baltimore leaders say negligence played a key role in the deadly collapse? Plus, another cold start to the day, but temperatures expecting to climb back up before tomorrow's potential rain. I feel like the sport is definitely gaining the attention it deserves. It's the bigger picture, and I'm happy for women's athletics. Mystics Madness taking over D.C.? When you can grab tickets for the big game against Indiana's Caitlin Clark. And it's National Picnic Day, helping you find spots to celebrate right here in the DMV. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good morning. It is 7 o'clock right now on a Tuesday morning, starting off with a live look outside at Roosevelt Island. You might want to take a little extra time to warm up your car this morning because it is another day with a cold start. But the good news is it is going to warm up. Thank you for starting your morning with us here on DC News Now. I'm Tanaya Wright. I'm Corey James. Good morning to you. Shanika's keeping an eye on the roads this morning for your commute. We're going to check with her for the latest in just a second. Meteorologist Jackie Lair is eyeing the forecast for you in case you haven't got out the door this morning. Yeah. Definitely be prepared for a little bit of cold. Yeah, definitely want to wear a parka like Shanika did this <laughs> morning just because it's one of the, another colder start this morning where uh, we also have some frost advisors and freeze warnings to talk about. Currently, though, some of the relatively warmer spots in the map, that's D.C., that's Annapolis and Lexington Park, all coming in at 46 degrees right now. It is 41 in Hagerstown. Elsewhere, we're talking about those 30s, though, just above the freezing mark right now in Manassas. At the freezing mark in Luray, lower 30s in Culpeper. Also seeing those lower 30s for Martinsburg. Uh, frost advisory, that's all this area is shaded in the light blue color. That's until 8 a.m. this morning. Freeze warnings, that's back over towards our westernmost areas like the Shenandoah Valley. But thankfully, Temperatures will rebound nicely back in the low 70s later on today. More details and then our next chance for some showers coming up right now. Doing toss over Shanika with the all important look at those roads. What are you seeing at this hour? All right, let's head out to uh, the Capitol Beltway. This is College Park right near Route 1. You are seeing some delays. You're slowing down on the inner loop side of the Beltway. So just give yourself more time if you're traveling in that direction. Now we have a couple of issues out there. Let's start with BW Parkway heading south right near 410. Do you expect some delays heading farther south? You're going to have quite a time trying to get through because of that crash. You're seeing some red spots and yellow spots there. So do beware. All right, Shanika, thank you. Developing now, firefighters are still cleaning up what is left of a warehouse fire in Virginia that could be seen for miles yesterday afternoon. Wow. Now, the fire was so intense, additional firefighters were called in to help to put it out. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala live from Sterling this morning with more on the cleanup efforts. Liberty, good morning. Good morning, Tanaya and Corey. Well, firefighters have been putting out hot spots since overnight, but it appears that they have made good progress. We're seeing less of that white smoke billowing into the air, but we're getting a better picture of the damage left behind. We're seeing just scraps of burnt metal out here. Now, firefighters say the flames were so intense here because of the roofing material inside that warehouse that was extremely flammable. Cell phone video shows billowing black smoke coming from the Prospect Water Roofing Company that could be seen for miles. The Loudoun County Fire Department rushed to the scene on Acacia Lane just after 3 p.m. yesterday. The fire grew so large and fast that a second alarm was called to dispatch more firefighters to battle the flames. One firefighter suffered minor burn injuries. Virginia State Police troopers also had to evacuate businesses and other warehouses nearby. It took firefighters more than two and a half hours to get the fire under control. Firefighters say the highly flammable roofing materials inside made the fire fight even more challenging. Roofing materials, primarily asphalt, tar, things like that, those are hydrocarbons, uh, very petroleum based, so it's it's very common to see large, large, dark columns of very thick smoke uh, when those type of products are burning. And some employees at the warehouse did not wish to go on camera, but they said 50 of them had to be evacuated because of the fire. Meanwhile, the fire marshal's office will be investigating the cause. For now, live here in Sterling, Liberty Zavala, DC News Now.
Liberty, thank you. D.C. police need your help this morning finding three people accused of pulling a gun on a security guard. This happened inside the CVS on Bladensburg Road in Northeast Saturday. Police say the suspects were stealing when the security guard confronted them, and that is when officers say one of the suspects pulled out a gun. No one was injured. Police are offering a reward of up to $10,000 for information leading to arrest. And take a look at this. D.C. police are looking for this suspect accused of robbing businesses in Northwest. You see him here inside a business on L Street this past Saturday. Video shows him standing at the counter for a few seconds, looking around and eventually reaching behind the register, opening it, and according to police, then committing that crime. Investigators say he robbed two businesses and attempted a robbery earlier this month. Baltimore City leaders are taking the owner and manager of the ship that crashed into the Key Bridge last month to court. DC News Now's Yal Marie Sase is here with what we are learning. So, Yal Marie, what are these court documents telling us? Yes, yeah, so essentially the court documents were actually filed by the Baltimore mayor and the city council. And to sum it all up, they want the owner and the manager of this cargo ship to be fully liable for the key bridge collapse. But there could be some issues along the way. Just a month ago, the Baltimore Bridge went down when the Dolly cargo ship crashed into it, which killed six construction workers and caused a lot of damage at the Patasco River and also left a huge impact on the port of Baltimore. Now, Baltimore leaders are accusing the cargo ship owner, manager, and even the crew for negligence. They say the Singapore-based company and their crew should have known whether the Dolly cargo ship was in good shape to travel before trying to leave Baltimore. But there could be something that may get in the way. Just days after the crash, the cargo ship company actually filed a petition for limited liability for the collapse. They're asking for a cap of $43.6 million. Now, ultimately, the decision of how much the company could owe will be in the hands of the Maryland Federal Court. But this could be one of the most expensive disasters in history. In the court documents filed by the Baltimore mayor and city council, their attorneys wrote, petitioner's negligence caused them to destroy the key bridge and single-handedly shut down the port of Baltimore, a source of jobs, municipal revenue, and no small amount of pride for the city of Baltimore and its residents. Now, the families of the crew members that died in this tragic accident are also looking into holding the cargo ship company responsible. Now, as for the status of when the bridge will reopen, it's going to take several months as crews continue to clean up, but they have opened up three temporary channels at the port so far. Reporting live in the studio, I'm Yamari Sase. Back to you guys. Thank you, Yamari. Your time right now is coming up on 707. Three people without a place to live after fire tore through their home in Prince George's County. Fire and EMS officials say the fire also killed a cat. Now, this happened at a home on Walker Mill Road in Capitol Heights just before midnight. Now, that fire has been put out. The county's Office of Emergency Management is now helping the three people displaced by the fire. And former President Donald Trump's hush money trial continues today. In opening statements yesterday, prosecutors said Trump set up a scheme to corrupt the 2016 election by falsifying business records. Prosecutors accused Trump of illegally hiding hush money payments to adult film star Stormy, Stormy Daniels. They say he told his then lawyer, Michael Cohen, to give Daniels a $130,000 check to keep her claims of a sexual encounter with Trump from surfacing during the campaign. However, Trump's defense argues the money Cohen gave to Daniels was not illegal. He should not even be here today because he did nothing wrong. This is a case where you pay a lawyer, it's a lawyer, and they call it a legal expense. The Hush Money case is the first of his four indictments to reach trial. Right now, Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Meantime, the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing arguments on whether Trump is immune from being prosecuted in a federal case. This case is charging him with plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The high court has the option to reject Trump's immunity claim and move on with the prosecution. Now, it could also reverse the lower court's decision and say he cannot be prosecuted for his actions during his time in office. And happening today, D.C. council members are expected to hold a committee of the whole meeting. Now, council members are looking to introduce a new bill working to address discrimination in housing. If it becomes law, the bill would allow homeowners to record amendments eliminating discriminatory restrictions. While any restrictions are currently unenforceable, they can still appear on property records. It would also allow a governing body to make these amendments without holding a vote. Supporters of the bill believe it creates uniformity and clear guidance to recording offices. Also happening today, Metro is previewing the upcoming summer construction on the red line. Now, the agency will close stations between Glenmont and Fort Totten to do maintenance work. MDOT is also building a purple line 
mezzanine at the Silver Spring Metro. Now, Metro says it's partnering with MDOT and Montgomery County Transit to provide shuttle buses for the closed stations. And this morning, Metro is providing more information on its plans for the Red Line summer work. Now, this starts at 1130 this morning and is at the top level of the Silver Spring Metro. Your time right now is 709. Tickets are on sale today to see Caitlin Clark in the nation's capital. The Mystics versus Fever tickets go on sale at 10 o'clock this morning. The resale tickets are already soaring to prices more than $275 each. Now, they typically cost about $100. The team's owner already moving the game to Capital One Arena, which seats about 15,000 more fans than their normal arena. A lot of fans believe Clark will draw more eyes to the WNBA after a dominant college career. It's good to see them moving here. That means that she is drawing the attention, and hopefully that means that they can draw the money as well. I feel like the sport is definitely gaining the attention it deserves, and it's giving recognition to female athletes that they really deserve. Happy for Caitlin in her own right. However, uh, it's, it's the bigger picture, and I'm happy for women's athletics. The Mystics take on the fever in D.C. on June 7th. And the Capitals back in action today, chasing another Stanley Cup title. They are looking to even to even their first round series with the Rangers. The Caps fell behind in the series after losing the opener 4-1 to one on Sunday. After today's game, the series comes back to D.C. for two games at Capital One Arena. Those games are scheduled for Friday and Sunday. The puck hits the ice tonight at 7.